Dimitri Kutornoy, Kutornoy, how much of a difference do goggles actually make at the higher price points? I hear people getting over four kilometers in the V800D. Um, so uh, when you're talking about higher priced goggles, um, you want to separate the goggle from the receiver module. That's the first thing. Now, in the case of the EV800D, the receiver module and the goggle are built in. They're not discrete. You can't separate them. But on the higher end goggles, you'll have a separate module bay for a receiver module, and you get to pick the receiver module that you want to use. SkyZone goggles will usually come with a SkyZone receiver module. Fat Shark goggles will typically come without a receiver module, and you'll put one in. A receiver module like Immersion RC Rapid Fire, TBS Fusion, SpeedyB has a receiver module, and so on. There... The higher end, there's basically two tiers of receiver modules, okay? There's the GOAT, excuse me, there's the GOAT tier, which is Rapid Fire, Fusion, the newest SkyZone, the Steady View module. I don't know about the Speedy B. Can anyone confirm if, I think the Speedy B also does the frame combining and so forth? These modules have a more sensitive receiver chip in them, and more expensive, of course, and that means that they inherently are, are able to get better range uh, out of the analog signal. Obviously, there's more to it than just using the higher sensitivity chip, but if, you, if you're using the standard RX5808, then you have worse performance, period. <coughs> Excuse me. My goodness. Um... So any of the other modules that don't have the, the, they're not in the GOAT tier, they're generally going to get worse performance, and the EV800D is like that. The other thing you're going to have is uh, higher gain antennas. And when you're hearing about people getting four kilometers off an EV800D, I mean, you should be aware that four kilometers is not that impressive. And especially if you've got a high-powered VTX and a high gain antenna, four kilometers, people go four kilometers on 25 milliwatts, Right. So uh, that's good for an EV800D because like right out of the box on the stock antennas, which if you don't put some work into it, you probably won't get four kilometers off the EV800D. Whoever did get four kilometers out of it, good for you. That's an achievement. But that doesn't speak particularly well to the, uh, to the receiver in the EV800D. And you would probably get better performance with a high, one of the GOAT tier modules like the Speedy like the uh, TBS Fusion, like the Rapid Fire, and the Sky's own uh, Steady View module. So, so, um, you can get a lot done off of something like the EV800D, but there's no question that the higher end modules and the higher end goggles will give you a more stable image, a steadier image, less flickering, and will hold on to the image longer, especially when paired with high quality antennas and a powerful VTX. The other thing is that the higher quality goggles, the more expensive goggles, will have better screens. Like the picture will just look better and they'll fit your face better and so forth. Do I have to reflash my flight controller because my flight controller only has a high def OSD and no standard def OSD because I have no OSD after flashing 4.5? I mean, what you probably did wrong is when you flashed it, I'm gonna guess that you didn't select these options correctly. Here in these options, other options, notice that we have an option here for OSD standard definition and OSD high definition. Now those are on by default, so I don't know how you managed to get rid of them. But if you flashed and somehow you deleted the OSD options here, then your OSD wouldn't work and you would need to go down and reflash by putting these options in. However, it's also possible some flight controllers don't have the OSD chip that lets them do, oh my goodness, it's gonna be a sneezy night, I apologize. Mm, uh, uh, they don't have the OSD chip that lets them do analog OSD. They were just made only to work with a high definition OSD. And if that's the case, then there's nothing you can do to make that controller support an analog OSD. What you would wanna look for uh, what you would want to look for is uh, if we look at a flight controller like this one, the T-Motor F7 HD. Well, I should show you. Hang on. I should show you one that has the chip so you know what you're looking for. So the T-Motor, uh, the Speedy B F7 has support for 
analog OSD. Are we going to have an image that shows us the OSD chip? Yes, here it is. Okay, so if you look right here, do you see this chip right here? Let me zoom in. This chip right here, that chip is the analog OSD chip. If your flight controller doesn't have that chip, it probably doesn't do analog OSD. I say probably because there are a few flight controllers out there that use a different technology to make the analog OSD. They're extremely rare and uh, you, you may not encounter them. But this chip, almost all of the time, that means that's your analog OSD. So if we look at something like the T-Motor F7 HD, um, what you may see, let's find out, I don't know for sure, is that it doesn't have that chip because it's a high def only flight controller. It doesn't have the capability to do analog OSD at all. Yeah, here's the other side. Do you see that nowhere on this flight controller is that chip? Can't do analog OSD, that's it. Here we've got a question from Fern, who is a patron in the Discord. I've got a question about a microphone on analog video systems. It seems like I've got that rare case where both the VTX and the VRX support audio, but I get no audio in the DVR. Um, the reason for that is likely this, okay? The video signal format supports stereo audio. So that signal can have both a left and a right audio channel. Basically, all video transmitters only transmit one audio channel because that's mono. And basically, all video receivers, like in your SkyZone goggles, only receive one audio channel. But sometimes you get in a situation where the video transmitter sends the left channel and the video receiver receives the right channel, in which case you get no audio. And wouldn't it be smart if they just transmitted both or listened on both and did like a mono mix down? Why, why don't they? I don't know, but they don't. So, what could you do? Uh, I don't know what you can do because I don't think you can change it. Um, yeah, I don't think you can change it. I would try different video receivers. Like, I'm surprised it doesn't work with the Rush VTX and the Sky Zone. That seems like a combination that would have been tried before. But if I was in the situation you're describing, I would assume I had that mismatch. And the only thing to do is try, like, uh, do you hear anything coming out? Do you hear static? Right? Maybe that's your problem. Like, you should at least hear static. If you don't hear static then your, 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 vid, your goggles aren't even recording audio at all. There is an option in the SkyZone goggles to turn the audio recording off. Have you turned, have you turned, maybe done that? 